A very good evening to all our FLOW members. With this global coronavirus pandemic, all of us have been confined to our homes. And while we wait for the season to change and bring with it a disease-free world, it's hard not to feel overwhelmed by the state of the world at the moment. The good news, even in times of anxiety and ennui, one can take proactive steps to help lift our mood. And what better way to lift ourselves but the, through the medium of art, as art has the power to transform, to illuminate, to educate, to inspire and to motivate. Today we have with us Ms. Bindal Shah, who is an artist and perennial seeker deeply influenced by spiritual themes connected to nature. Influenced by her student years as a graphic artist at the BK Somani Safaya Polytechnic Mumbai, her style of work tends to be semi-realistic with the use of bold colors and patterns. She uses vibrant, cool, and warm color schemes to bring forth both tactile and visual textures. She's an avid follower of the Sufi belief of oneness with the spirit and harmony in the world that we live in. Ms. Bindal has participated in over 30 group art shows where her work has been critically acclaimed. So now without wasting any more time, I would like to invite our chairperson, Kanika Ved, to give a welcome address. Over to you, Kanika. Thank you, Charu. Good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our event at Flow Kanpur. Art is the closest subject to my heart. Art is everywhere, influencing us daily, whether we realize it or not. The art that we are surrounded by, whether it's a painting, music, or even videos, can have a huge impact on our mood and emotions. In a true sense, it's another approach to meditation and self-connection. Michelangelo rightly said, a man paints with his brains and not with his hands. Today, when we are gripped with the second wave of coronavirus and listening to disheartening news every day, it becomes challenging to balance our thoughts and maintain our stress levels. We need to redirect ourselves. And what better way than to learn a new skill, a new form of art. Upskilling helps us gain new experiences, trains our brains to handle wide range of challenges and keeps our neural pathway active which in turn keeps us healthy. Let us all leave everything behind for an hour and unwind ourselves to learn the art of coffee painting. During the workshop, we'll be learning and making cards of gratitude for our frontline workers. We'll be sending out these cards of appreciation along with the coffee hamper to our real heroes for their dedication to keeping us healthy during the pandemic and making a difference in our community. To begin this session, I would like to welcome Ms. Bindal Shah for joining us today. And along with Bindal, I would also like to welcome her sister, Payal Shah. Over to you, Bindal. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for such a kind uh, uh, flow of words. I think Flow Fiki is an amazing uh, platform to be on. So we are very happy, especially the Kanpur chapter. So, you know, it's just a way to sort of bridge the gap, the distance that is there uh, between, you know, the geographical distance. But thank you so much for your kind words, Charu and uh, Kanika. So yes, without, uh, you know, further ado, let's uh, start. So welcome once again, everyone. And uh, I'd just like to show one short presentation about coffee painting as we, also talk about who we are and what we do. So my sister Payal, who's in New York and she's woken up early, especially to join us. Uh, and I, we run a business called Artevo, where we promote upcoming artists. And we have paintings from over 90 artists on display with us. So we can also show you all the work online. So that, that's basically a short uh, introduction about us. But uh, so coffee painting is something that I discovered, you know, in uh, this lockdown period, we've been doing lots of workshops and, uh, you know, exploring lots of different mediums. And we realized that people do not have a lot of material on hand. So, you know, when you tell somebody join a workshop, but you will need paints and you will need, you know, so many different uh, materials, they feel a little disappointed. They don't want to join because they feel that, uh, you know, it's, it's not going to be worth it. 
so this is just a little simple uh, guideline as to what we are going to do today. We are going to create different tonal values with coffee, coffee being the, the main ingredient, of course. And you will see that with the most basic, simple materials, how we're going to create some really lovely uh, artwork. So here you can see the different tonal values actually create, uh, you know, depth in an artwork. We're also, uh, you know, we can use different techniques. So here we've used salt to create this look. So, uh, so paintings like this and of course, the, you know, it's an endless, um, you know, like scope that you can keep trying with. So once you've made your coffee, uh, you know, liquid, all the different tones, you can try stylized art like this. You can do, you know, more basic work. So yeah, that's a short, uh, you know, introduction to coffee painting. And we'll start and I'd request everyone to follow along with me. And if there are any questions or, uh, you know, you want us to slow down or, you know, go a little faster, you can write that in the chat. So if Kanika can, you know, help us with that. And um, thank you so much, Minu. And uh, Kanika, if I could request you to uh, spotlight this page so that everyone can see it. Spotlight it. Okay, bye. So uh, I'm equally excited and I'm just ready to go now. So I hope everyone is able to get the material. Uh, basically what we'll start with is actually making our liquid coffee. Once and, should I spotlight your artwork? With yes, yes, please, please. The work surface basically. Yes. So I'm sorry for there's a little poor lighting today because it's been raining very, very heavily here in Mumbai. It's almost like a storm here. And you might hear some creaky noises because my windows are going. <laughs> but I hope we can make it through this. So here I have these containers. Basically, they look like this. Any kind of takeout containers are, are good. It's good if you have uh, see-through containers like this because um, you know, you can also use steel katoris or a pallet, but this really helps because you can actually see the, the intensity of the liquid through this. But anything you have at this point is good. And uh, yeah, uh, next we need some coffee. So here I have this brand of coffee, but you can take anything. Nescafe is good. Uh, you know, anything is really fine. I think if you put your, uh, you know, your settings to speaker view, then you might be able to see the spotlight video. I'm just gonna, so here I have a small spoon and I hope this is, okay, let me make it here. So this is visible, right? So here I have four such containers. And I'm going to pour uh, the same amount of coffee powder, which is approximately this much. So it's about a little over a pinch. If you can see what I'm doing, you can make it along with me. You can add more later. And then for the last one, I'm going to add about a pinch and a half or even two pinches. So I'll just show you all the containers. And coffee painting has another really great advantage and that is the smell, the aroma of coffee. So here I have my coffee dropped in all my four containers. You can see this. And it's more or less the same amount of uh, coffee. And next, what I'm gonna do is just take some water. You can use the same spoon. Or you can, if you're good with estimating how much water will go in each one, you can do it freehand also. 
So here I've got my uh, container of water. Linnal, can you yeah, move it up yeah, a little? Yeah, the yeah, entire yeah. thing, yeah. So here is my container of water. And what I'm gonna do is first drop one. So if you're using a bigger steel spoon, then it's about half a teaspoon in each cup. And then add another half only in three. And then add some more only in two. So we are making different intensities of coffee basically. And in one, I'm gonna add a little more water. So I'll show you all what I mean. So this is my, the darkest coffee here. This one is one lighter than that. This one is still lighter, but this one is the most diluted. So it's the lightest, the watery coffee. <laughs> yeah. So I hope everyone's got a container and a plate and uh, a coin ready. And then we can move this slightly out of the way, our containers. Yeah. So we are gonna do one round of a, a, a trial wash, just to see what we are getting in terms of our... Uh... Aye, aye. Yeah, so I've got my tissue, I've got a, a brush, any brush will do for this. What I need you to do is dip into your lightest coffee. Just stir it really well so that, here, I'll show you which one. So I'm gonna call it coffee number one, which is our lightest coffee. And then just do one trial of some stroke work here. So you can see I've created a very light, faint coffee texture. Then you go into your coffee number two and you can go over that just below it. You can layer it two, three times to make sure that you're getting the right intensity. And the third is our number three coffee. And you can see how it's getting darker as we progress, right? With the same number of strokes, but I'm getting darker and lighter options. And now my number four, which is my darkest coffee is gonna go here. And at first it will not look too different, but when you layer it three to four times, you will get a darker version over here. So these are my four layers that I've created with the coffee. So basically we are gonna work with this. These are gonna be our light and dark tones in our coffee painting. I hope everyone is ready for the, uh, the main artwork. No. Kanika, are we ready? Yes, we are ready. Awesome. So great. Now what I need you to do is take a plate like this. Any, <laughs> any quarter plate will do. And take your lightest coffee and just pour a little bit in it. About two to two spoons is fine. And then just turn it around like this. Right? Once you're done with this, you take a container like this. Even a glass bowl or a coral bowl will do. What you need to do is then turn it in. Turn it in your uh, plate. Make sure that the rim over here is nicely coated with the coffee. Make sure your coffee is not too watery. It needs to be just right. Your coffee number one should be fine, but if you think it's too watery, Yes, the lightest one should be correct for this. 
Then with the same scrap piece of paper that we were practicing on, I need you to cut a small piece. Even freehand is fine. Like this. So it's about three quarters to one inch wide and about this uh, one and a half inches in height. So approximately. Why like this? Yeah. When you're ready, we'll take our fair paper, the one that we are going to make our artwork on. And since Kanika, you mentioned that y'all are doing these uh, thank you cards, gratitude cards. Yes. What uh, the participants can do is once the artwork is ready on this uh, A5 paper, we can actually trim around it, mm -hmm. stick it on, a, uh, on an A4 card and then write the message inside. Then they just need to fold it over. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. So here we are. I've placed my... <laughs> I've placed my uh, piece of paper here. You can see that. I'll just show it to you again. It's towards the bottom half of my paper. Yeah. And then just hold it like this at the tip. Get this plate closer to you. Make sure the rim of your oh, it is not hard. Your tumbler is nicely dipped in the uh, coffee in your plate. And then just pick it up and put it on top like this. I'll show it to you all again. Don't move it around too much. So it's like this. Half my paper is jutting out from here. You can see and half is gone inside under the tumbler. But try to keep this orientation slightly in the center of the paper. Give it a little bit, just a tiny bit of a twist here, like so. Okay, when you're ready, just very gently pick it up. So this one is, uh, you have to dip it in the dark coffee or a light? No, one? the lightest coffee, the lightest coffee. So you will see that done is in circle. Yeah, Binal, can you just slightly, quickly repeat what you did? So what and someone just said, go a little slower. Okay, okay, sure. Yeah. So basically, I, I took my blank paper. I put this little, uh, you know, scrap of paper towards the bottom half of the sheet. I dipped my bowl. Okay. This bowl. Okay. Uh, yeah, that is any rough paper, okay. any piece of paper. Okay. It just we just wanted to block this much area at the bottom, and then you dip your bowl, and then you just put the bowl on top of the paper, pretty much in the center of this paper. Okay, so this is the result you will get. Don't. Why are you wasting coffee? Could you so, request all of you to put your questions on the chat box? It will be easier to take up, please. So you can use your lightest coffee. Okay. Right? And what we can do is if we have extra coffee in the plate, we can just gently uh, put it back in our bowl, in our container. So if you want to go over this line right now because it's wet, you can. Yeah. So see what we've done. We've created this circle, but the circle is open at the bottom here. Yes. Is everyone fine with this so far? If we could just see some thumbs ups. Yes, yes, we are. Okay. Lovely. So now we are ready. We should, we can put our plate and our bowl away. Just, basically now all you need is a tissue, the brush and so your... When the few people have smaller circles, but they should try and have a circle that almost fits the page, right? Yes, ideally that's better. But if you don't, you can practice for now. And then later when you know you have the right size bowl, you can make a fresh one. But don't miss out on practicing because then you'll uh, sort of not get the hang of it. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. So now is where our pencil comes in. I have a 
All right. So you can see over here what I'm doing now is I'm going to uh, take approximately one third from the top over here and create a line. Yeah. Okay. Just a, it doesn't have to be a straight or a perfect line. You don't need a ruler, just an approximate line dividing this like this. Try and not make it very dark. Yeah. And then we're just going to draw some mountains here. Again, they can be very approximate. You don't have to be very perfect with it. Vinal, can you please move it a little up? Like yeah, I'll, I'll slide up. Yeah, yeah, perfect. I'll tilt it actually a little bit. Yeah, perfect. Just tell me if I need to move it further. No, this is nice. Yes, so I'll show you all a close up of what I've done. This is basically about four to five mountains in the back. Don't worry if your circle is smaller than this. You can't see the there mountain. Is, yeah, they're a little light. Yeah, one second, I'll just show you. Can you see it now? Yeah. So they don't have to be perfectly or exactly like this. It's just a few mountains. So we know that we are creating these layers at the back. Okay, next, we're just going to draw an S shape here. And the S shape going wider over here. I'll draw it a little darker, but I would request everyone to try and keep it as light as possible. We don't want pencil lines showing through the coffee painting, right? So we want, I'll make the mountains also slightly darker. Is this better? Yeah. <laughs> Where is the S drawn? S is drawn from the base of the mountain. Okay. In the middle. Like and a pathway, is it? Sorry? It's like a pathway, is it? It's like a pathway. Yeah. And can I have a look? Uh, can you just put the photo so I can have a little bit? Uh, okay, okay. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I got it. Yeah, okay. So again, it doesn't have to be a perfect, uh, you know, air. So just try to make it narrower at the top. And as it comes down, you can make it wider. So we are trying to show it in perspective. And that's why it's narrow at the top. But this is all the drawing that is required. So don't worry. There's no more complicated stuff happening. Now we're going to, now is where the fun begins. Okay, now I need you guys to take your coins, put them anywhere at the top over here. You can take a bigger or smaller coin depending on how much. I'm going to turn my paper around so that I don't accidentally touch the coffee over here and mess it up. I'm going to put my co uh, coin, press it over here with one finger. <laughs> take my coffee number two. Okay. And gently go on top of the mountains. Don't touch the mountains. Don't go into the mountains. Just above the mountains, but around the coin and in your circle. If you can see what I'm doing, I'll repeat the steps so that if at all you feel. <laughs> Right? I'm holding my coin firmly in place. I'm not going to change that. And then I can do some shading work over here. The co coin is in the mountain or on the path? No, it's above the mountain. So the Sorry. coin is going to make a, a vacant spot for the sun. 
oh. we are not painting that we are painting what we are painting right now is a sky around oh. with, okay you can take coffee number 2 3 and 4 to create these little what i'm doing is i'm just gently dabbing some darker and lighter coffee while it is still wet so that i get a nice blended effect over here right i leave the coin as it is i'm not going to touch it right now i'm just i'm going to wait for it to dry before i pick it up so can you see what i've done here <clears throat> it's all above the mountains over here and uh, so while this coffee is wet what you can do if you feel you've gone over in any place it's a narrow place you can just dab it gently with the earbud to remove any excess coffee if you feel zyada ho gaya you can just quickly go in take your uh, earbud or even a corner of a tissue if you don't have a earbud and just wipe it off and uh, again the fun thing with coffee is that you can keep layering and keep making it darker and more intense but with the one coffee the one brown color you can achieve beautiful results right so here we are now our sky is done and what we are going to do is not touch the top of the mountain so when you are doing any kind of coffee painting make sure that when this coffee is wet which is our sky right now we don't go anywhere close to that area like on the top of the mountain area but anywhere else on the paper you can work there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start with the base of the mountain for one mo mountain i just like you all to watch what i'm doing i'm going to take the darkest coffee and i'm going to start drawing at a painting at the base of this mountain i'm going to take one mountain at a time just to make sure that i get that difference in the uh, in each mountain and you can dab it you can do it in a stroke a single stroke whatever works for you so i'm taking a dark coffee and just putting it at the base of one mountain i just like you all to watch me do this one and then when i'm doing the others you can continue doing it for right so you you can take this coffee do almost half the mountain See why I am doing these uneven strokes is to get that rugged look of a mountain, because the mountain is obviously not um, smooth, right? Then I take my coffee number two, and I am going to make it lighter at the top. Can you see how it's going up? So I am getting a shaded effect over here, and trust me, this is like the most beautiful thing you can do with coffee painting. Can you all see this now? Yes, we can. So this is basically what we want to achieve. When your coffee, suppose you feel you were trying to get a rugged look, and you know it's blended too well now, and you can't do anything about it right now. Wait, we let it dry a little bit, and then we'll come back and make it. We'll give it a little texture. I'll show you how we can do that. when this is done i'm going to go to another mountain which is away from this place so that i don't and hopefully by the time we go towards the top of the mountain our sky should be dry enough for us to work with so here i'm doing the same thing i'm dabbing the darkest coffee at the base you will get a beautiful 3d look when you're done with this and this is something very simple even if you don't have any previous art experience it's just about controlling the movement of your brush so you can put a lighter stroke a darker stroke if you feel you put too much coffee accidentally just take a dry dry your brush wet it in water dry it and then you can just remove the excess like here if i don't want too much in this corner i'm just going over a dry brush and i remove the darkest part so the same goes for when i want to add a darker element then i just go and i can keep dabbing more of that coffee 
make sure it doesn't become too watery because then it will take that much longer. And if you're an impatient person like me, then you are not going to be happy with that. So here we are, right? Should we wait a little, uh, Kanika, for? Um, no, I, no, let's continue in case you all okay. want us to go slow. Please type in the chat box. We'll go a little slow then. Okay, lovely. So I'm moving my coffees a little closer for you all to see. So it's one, two, three, and four in this order. Okay, now comes the tricky part. Let's see if we are ready to pick up our coin. Here. I've picked the coin and I've got this white uh, sun in the background. And don't worry if it's uneven, you can just make it a little smooth because your coffee is still not completely dry. So here you're getting a lovely glowing sun in the background. Can you see? So basically what I did was I picked up the coin. Now that this is little dry, it's not fully dried yet, my sky, but it was dry enough for me to pick this up. And then I, what I've done is whatever was uneven around the edges, I've just gone and done a little blending with a dry brush. It's not a 100% dry brush. Thank you so much, everyone. It's not a 100% dry brush, but it's a little drier than with the coffee. Right? So now I think we are ready to go to our next mountain. So it's exactly the same thing. You continue in the same way. You add your darkest coffee towards the base. But now we'll go a little bit lighter. And the, the trick that I want to show you here, in case you want to show snow-capped mountains, thank you, you don't touch the top of the mountain here because the mountains at the back are usually the ones which have the snow on them. So we are, you know, since we can't travel right now, this is the closest we can get to reliving that, right? So this is my third mountain where I've not, I've not deliberately, I've left this white part without any coffee. So it's as white as my paper white, right? So this is something you can do with coffee. Coffee doesn't dry instantly on your paper like some other mediums. You can still work with it a little bit so you can once you do a little bit more practice, you will understand which tone of coffee you want to use. Again, depending on the artwork also, you can take a call. And then you can move your paper a little bit on the, yeah, like this. Thank so, you. So here again, what I'm doing is I'm leaving a little bit of paper white to suggest snow. And then this is my last mountain, which I'm just going to cover fully. So like I said, when it is dry, and I'll show you how we can add a little more layers. See, now this, because I'm holding the paper at an angle, the coffee is sliding down on my paper. So I'll let that be, but don't panic when that happens. You can just gently dab it off. Dab off anything that's excess and you're done, right? So this is more or less what we need. Now, later I'll show you with a thinner brush how we're gonna add some more details. Now, if you are up to it, we can, and this is not compulsory, only for those who feel like they want to, you can add a small basic house over here. I'll draw it a little dark, but this is not compulsory at all. It's just to show that we can add whichever element we want in our work at whichever point. So here I've just drawn a simple basic house. You can look at a reference picture also and copy from there, right? 
and here again my coffee is blending from one mountain to the other so again i have to be careful because i'm moving my paper around a little bit it's bound to happen right so our sky is done our sun is done and our mountains are done so it's time to move i'm sorry my just give me a second please yes okay so when we are ready we'll go to the uh, to the field so basically what we are showing here is the valley or the field and for that i'm going to take my coffee number 2 and just go and give it one single wash not touching the wavy lines that we have done in the middle but on both sides of the wavy lines like this and on the other side like this if you have made a house or any other object there then you can avoid it don't paint over it but around it like this I think the uh, why is it wrong? Oh. Sorry, just give me a second. I'm sorry, Kanika. There seems to be an issue with my other device. No, it's with my other device. I'll just try and sign in. All right, all right. We'll wait for that. Yeah. I'm trying to just make it work. Yeah, is this visible? You are visible, Bindal. Ah, uh, you'll have to spotlight. I've signed in from yet another device, so. So what's what's the name of that device? Uh, Bindal Shah. I do. Yeah. I'm really sorry about this. Yes, I think we can see now. Okay. And there's no audio issue, right? With this, mm, we can hear you. Just give me one. Yeah, is this fine? Is this fine for everyone? Okay, great. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, lovely. So we will go on, and we were at our uh, the meadows, the plain over here, and what we want to do now is take our dark coffee, coffee number four, which is this, right? The darkest coffee you've made. You can adjust anything at any point. If you feel your dark coffee is not dark enough, you'd like to see some more, you know. Um, like darker tones in your artwork please feel free to add more uh, coffee powder but add it a little at a time very gently now what i'm doing now is with a medium sized brush it's about four or five numbered brush 
I'm just going and creating this kind of a texture. So just dab on it. If you can see the motion of my hand, you'll see that I'm just creating a dabbing motion. here. Don't worry, there is no perfection in art in any case. The more imperfect your art is, the better it looks. And then we are going to again do the same thing where we create a gradient. Basically go from dark to light. So here at the top, I have my darkest tone. As I go down, I'm going to go a little lighter. So now I'm going to dip into my coffee number three and go lighter as we come down. And you may notice that some of the texture is not always going to be visible everywhere. But as long as you can see some of it in some places, that's fine. Right? So this is done on one side of my artwork. Right? I'll just hold it up. So it looks somewhat like this. Again, don't worry about it being perfect. If there is excess coffee, you can go with a earbud and just dab it off. So what we did with the container was to create a circle over here within which we are going to paint. And since you all are doing this as a gratitude card for you know, frontline workers, you can even draw something which is related to them. When you do a final work, you can add something or you can write a sweet message towards the end of it. You know, um, anything that expresses, you know, your feelings. So again, I'm taking my darkest coffee. Now this might be a little tricky. So be careful because we have an object in the middle. We have this house, which we want to avoid painting over. But uh, it's not impossible as most things in life. And like I said, we can keep layering, we can keep adding darker tones. Once you've made it very dark, it's difficult once it dries to make it light. But if you've started with a light or a medium tone, you can keep adding more dark elements to it. And wherever you feel like, okay, here I want some detail to come, be a little aware of you know, how that is going to happen. How you're going to include, like if you want a tree in this picture, where would you want it? Leave a little space around that. And then, and then you can keep working on it. Yeah, so here I'm almost done with my clay, my meadows. Are we all good so far? I'm sorry, I'm not looking up and, you know, checking anything. No, we are. Yeah, okay. So here is the work so far. Okay. You can see there are some slightly darker elements, but that's okay. If you think it's too dark and maybe you want to go and, you know, add it at a later point, just remove, remove some of that, make it a little mi medium tone like this. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So you can see I've avoided the house, basically, the hut, and I've painted the remaining areas here. So I've done this texture kind of look over here on the plains. It's mainly just to make it look a little different from the mountains. Otherwise, everything would look too plain. But if you feel like you want to, um, you know, not do that, keep it plain, that's also fine. So everything is okay. As long as your creativity comes through in it. Right? So this is where we are. And now what we're going to do is take our lightest coffee again. And this is going to be a stream. So it's a river or a stream that's coming from the mountains through the plains. But remember that gap that we had. So we basically want to show an outpouring of this river. So like outpouring of our gratitude for our frontline workers, the same way the river is also pouring out of our circle. 
So what I've done, you can see, is just created a very light wash where the river is. And I'm not going to touch this too much. At the most, if you want to make it a little darker at the back, because it's coming from there, it's likely to be a little dark over here. So I'll add my coffee number two over here. That's it. I'm not going to make too much, uh, you know, texture or drama right now over here. And then when you're done with this, I would prefer to move to a thinner brush like this. But don't worry if you don't have one. When you use a slightly thicker brush, but you want to give it a nice, uh, you know, thin look or a delicate uh, finish to the work, what you do is even with a thicker brush, you just hold it gently and you just touch only the tip to the paper. Don't put the entire brush like a splosh on it, right? So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color my roof really dark. Now, there's a little, this is a little tricky because we still have uh, our meadow, which is damp. But in the interest of time, like ideally, if you're doing this on your own or any coffee painting on your own, you would wait for this to dry a little more. Since we don't have that luxury of time right now, I'm just gonna um, show you all this. So I'm taking my darkest coffee. Thank you so much, Sharani. And I'm just touching the roof because in my imagination, I'm thinking the walls might be a little light, but the roof will be dark, right? And again, this is a very simple basic house, but if you want, you can make a chimney, you can make some smoke coming out of it. You can add more windows, you know. Um, so here, see my, because my meadow was slightly damp, it's go going and blending into this. So what I'm gonna do is just pick up some of the paint for now from my meadow. So uh, coffee painting is like watercolor. Only thing in watercolors, you would of course need a cake of watercolors or tubes of watercolors to work with them. But this is a very, very therapeutic way of painting, of spending time. You can look at any reference picture and try to make uh, you know, a coffee painting out of it. You can look at any black and white picture and make it into a coffee painting. Just follow the tonal values and you'll get them. Again, I'm going to dip into my light colored paper, uh, light colored coffee and just go over this. And of course, when you're done, if you want to give it a little more detailed outlining, you can take a, a brown colored marker and, you know, want to add the finest details in a with a pen or a marker you can do that so my house is getting a little blended with everything else but i'm happy to answer any questions while we wait so kanika if there are any questions as of now it looks very nice very thank you so much. Thank you. I'm loving the aroma with it. <laughs> That's the best part for me. Yeah. And this is really excellent. You know, when you're painting, the good thing about doing an art workshop or any creative workshop is that you are so lost in it that automatically it just becomes a stress buster. It takes your mind away from all the other thoughts that are going on all the time. You can turn on some nice music, you know, maybe even sip on your coffee. I want to know who Tira and Misu is because that's my favorite coffee flavored dessert. Also. <laughs> I saw that and I was so tempted to name my account also that. And Bindal, it's great to see small kids are working oh, their way. Yeah. Yes, so I can see some, I can't see everybody's uh, pictures. Yeah. But uh, Kanika, if you could share with us some of the work done by the kids, you know, them holding the work or... At the end, I'll ask... Mitali. Okay, we'll do that later. Also, uh, Kanika, if um, you all want to see the kind of work that we do... Yeah, yeah everybody can follow. show their work once while your painting is drying by the time. 
everybody else can you know show their yeah i can see a larger uh, because i don't i don't think i'll be able to see individually all right but yes so if i can see some uh, um Rakan. We have a yeah. question from uh, one of our viewers. They, she joined late, so she just wants a quick recap on how do you make the different shades of coffee. Sure, sure. I'll do that in a minute. I'll just do that before yeah. we start again. Oh, lovely! Oh my gosh, Nalini Sanwal is amazing. I can see Shruti Junjunwala's work. Oh wow! Oh, yeah, Mitali, you can show your work. Yeah, thank you. Wow, wow. Oh my gosh, Nita, is that Nita Mehrotra? Amazing! She's gone and done roses. Lovely, so pretty. Oh, lovely, Ashima! I think he's the youngest participant. Looks like. Thank you, thank you, Ashima. Is not your name? I'm guessing. So I, I know it's her daughter actually, Ashima. Uh -huh. Okay, <laughs> lovely. I think that you may, a lot of people have their videos off. I think. But lovely, Hello. thank you so much. I think next time I'm going to pick some of your uh, participants to teach me how to coffee paint. <laughs> I'm going to post pictures on the group later. Please, please, please. That would be amazing. Yeah, I think we are sort of drying the work now. So we can go now and, you know, so I'm going to do, I'm going to show one last trick. Um, so my, my base work is ready. You can see it here. You can spotlight it back to this if it's not already. Um, so I, I don't want to go over with too much coffee because I'm happy with the overall look of this. So I'm going to leave it as it is. But what I'm going to show you all now, go back to some coffee powder, okay, where we started. Uh, in my darkest coffee, I'm just going to add one more pinch of coffee. Now, this is going to give me my darkest coffee which we had not made initially and I wouldn't uh, make it too much in advance only because I don't know if I'll really need it so here you can see this is like a little gada, gada also can you see this yeah so now with my thin brush and again if you don't have a thin brush don't worry just watch what I'm doing I'm gonna go into the area. So now a good way to test if your work is dry is don't put your hand flat because you don't know if your hand has some dirt or you know paint on it. So go with this, your pinky finger and just dab it very gently on the paper like this, okay? That will give you an idea of how damp your work is. So my river and the base of this mountain is a little damp, but overall, all this area is uh, lighter. But what I'm going to do is going to start with this area. I'm going to differentiate the mountain. So you can see now how this color is really, really dark compared to all the coffee paint that we put. So here is my darkest coffee. And I'm going to just, again, I'm blending it. I don't want any sharp outlines, but I can use this. Uh, say on my roof because I'm not so happy with the way my roof has blended with the rest of my surrounding. I want to give it a darker look. So here I've gone and painted it more intense and I can keep doing this. I can keep painting it darker as I go. Now see this because my paper was damp the coffee has started leaking out of it. So again I'm going to reach out and just gently dab it. Don't stretch it too much just keep dabbing it. So once you're done with this, wait for it to dry. Obviously it was not very dry to begin with. Right? And then we're just gonna add some lines to suggest flowing water. So again, don't worry. It doesn't have to be one continuous line. You know, we may not all be comfortable with the movement of our uh, paint brushes. But this is to suggest flowing water, right? It's becoming like a waterfall here. And you can make beautiful works. You can do a whole uh, seascape with boats and water. 
and you know a beach uh, kind of scene you can do any object like suppose you find a beautiful seashell you can practice with that or even an image from the internet you can just look it up and keep practicing so with any art form the more you practice the better you're going to get at it so here you can see i've got this and then what i'm going to do is with my coffee number 3 i don't want very dark coffee i'm just going to do some splatters can you see what this looks like so do it with coffee number 2 and with 3 so that you get a variation in the splatters okay we don't need too many just a few and then just drag them down so that it looks like it's actually water that's splashing up again all these are extra things you don't really have to do that but these are just tricks to suggest that you know it is water that's actually coming down when this is a little dry i'm going to take some darker coffee again and splash it so here this is almost ready now if i want some more dark coffee elements just some shadows over here i can do that but i would suggest that if your paper is wet don't touch it right now wait for it to dry a little more and then go over it how are we doing on time kanika can okay, i be good to go so here now again i'm taking some i'm going to take my dark coffee this time and just go over this just to show some you can do the same effect if you want to show a field full of flowers you can do the same effect on a ground level also and you'll get the same grass kind of uh, feeling there like you can do some over here you know some taller grass that's visible in the foreground yes so this is basically it mm -hmm. nice i'll hold it up a little bit so yeah a little down bundle yes that's it we can all see this yes so i hope everyone enjoyed we can put a thumbs up there to see Yeah, we have some very interesting comments from all. Please let me know. <laughs> I'd love to get your feedback. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you keep creating, and I hope you continue to work and create beautiful works. <laughs> and trust me we'll be over this uh, difficult time sooner than later so because you know with with the lovely smiles that everyone is showing me right now <laughs> uh so shall we take the question there are just a yes, couple yes. of questions now uh some of our viewers wanted to again know the consistency of the coffee right yeah i'll go over that now i'll just tell you all one more time just give me a second okay so i'm just going to do a quick recap basically what we did was first uh to practice we did these different intensities of the coffee once it have lost yeah so basically uh what we do is we take uh, bits of coffee just like a uh, you know pinch of coffee we create these um, four or five depending on how large your artwork is or you know how much uh, uh contrast you want to show in your artwork we create these kinds of different coffee intensities basically from light to medium to dark to very dark 
And then what we do is we use these intensities of coffee to create this. And this is basically, if you notice, it's like a sepia toned um, picture. Like in our olden days, you know, how our grandparents or their yes. parents had, you know, those sepia toned pictures. So with coffee painting, you can basically achieve that look. And when we have this, you can take any card paper. So this is like a watercolor paper, but any kind of cardstock paper is fine for this work. You can do a pencil outline of whatever you want to paint in, uh, just as a guideline, but keep your pencil outlines very light and very minimal. Uh, it should serve just as a guideline. If you uh, can avoid it and you do freehand work, that's even better. But if you need to, that's fine too. So I'll just show you all some of my previous work. Yeah, that's what they want to know, see. So this was something we had done. And sometimes when it dries, it becomes this dark and this intense. So oh, here, you, thank you. Here, what we did was we took a, a dark brown pencil and did some outlines. We did some texture work here to show a night sky, you know, with the clouds actually coming over the, the moon. Sun. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is from another one. Ayanas Binder, how you used salt? Yes. Uh, do you want me to show you? Yeah. Okay. You so this, see. just see the work, I'll call for it. Oh, well, lovely. You explain us. Yeah, so I'll show you. So basically when your uh, coffee paint is still wet on the surface, what you do is just from a distance about um, eight to 10 inches above your paper, <clears throat> you can take some grains of salt and just uh, do a very light sprinkle how you'd sprinkle it on a salad mm -hmm. the same thing. and just very gently do that let it dry completely <clears throat> so that you'll achieve your background and i would suggest that don't touch the paper till that is completely dry all right and then of course once that so this is the look you'll get you know it's like a distressed look but it can look like clouds it can look it, it can give you various different textures so this is another artwork where we used, we did it a, a little more stylized work with the same coffee painting. So obviously this is not exactly how the bird looks, but we've created this pattern in the feathers or, you know, given it a slightly exaggerated. Mm -hmm. This is also something that we've done, which is lots of fun. Again, you don't need to have too many, you know, artistic skills to do this. But this is a lovely depth in it. Yes, yes. So that's how, like, this is uh, one way to understand how you can create so many different layers with yeah. And I can keep adding more details. Once this is a little more dry, I can go over with my darkest coffee. I can keep doing minute details, you know. It depends on exactly the kind of look you want to achieve with this. Okay. So I think somebody was asking. Thank you. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, no, please carry on. No, I was saying if, uh, you know, we, we uh, do workshops, but we work with a minimum. Yeah, for children. Right, for children as well as for adults. And we okay. do workshops where you don't need too many complicated materials. Like we've done, you know, even basic pencil sketching. We've done, um, you know, with uh, we do paper flowers, so you can use your scrap paper and make beautiful, uh, you know, artwork, craft work out of this. So yeah, if you all are interested, we can make small groups, and you know, you can reach out to us at uh, our uh, Instagram handle. You can just DM us, and we can work on something for you guys. I'll post it for everyone. So that's great information for everyone. So uh, thank you so much, Ms. Bindal. It was an absolutely wonderful session. I think everybody's creative buds have been awoken and uh, they have something different to venture into, especially with a simple household ingredient like coffee and the variants it can create. So and I think we've got most of our answers for our questions. So now I hand over to Kanika, our chairperson, for the certificate of appreciation. Thank, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Bindal. It was truly amazing. They knew where the time flew by when you told me to check out the time. I was like, okay, we are done with an hour almost. Yes. And I, we really believe in, you know, giving out green certificates, which means that there's, we have planted a tree in your name. And oh,
Thank you so and much. The certificate number, Vindal, at the right side of the certificate. You can track your tree with that. Oh, how nice. Thank you so much. It was truly amazing. And now I would like to call upon my senior vice chair. Also, my senior vice chair is not well today. So I would like to call upon my vice chair, Sneha Gupta, to give a vote of thanks, please. Over to you, Sneha. Yeah. You're on mute. Uh... Yes, we can hear you. I think somebody's put her on mute. A very good evening to everyone. I'm very sure that a lot of us are feeling a sense of accomplishment by the end of today's workshop. This was a session full of creativity and imagination. The beauty of painting is that it has a language of its own. And one form of expression cannot be compared to another. I would now like to begin by extending my heartiest gratitude to Ms. Bindal Shah. We're immensely grateful to you for bringing out the hidden artist in each one of us and for lightening our moods in these out of the ordinary times. I want to thank to our chairperson Kanika Ver for going the extra mile each time during these solemn times in order to rejuvenate us with such talented artists. I would also like to thank Charu Ved for chairing this event so graciously. Extending my thank you to the media team for handling it each time impeccably. Most important, I would like to extend a heartiest gratitude to our annual sponsors, Eris Life Sciences and Primanjali Foundation for their generosity. And to Namrata Narula from Bake Armor for sponsoring the cookies. And just as importantly, a big thank you to all the members from all Flow chapters, Pan India for cheering us and coming together each time in good attendance. Thank you once again for joining today's coffee painting event. Have a great evening. Thank you, Sena.